Hi guys, James from DBG and welcome to another video on stuff what I have just finished painting. Um, as you can see, this is a continuation from the unboxing video. This is the Wall of Games Italery M10 Wolverine Tank Destroyer. And I've actually done something I have never done before on this. I've put mud on it. Not my usual dry brushy, dusty um, stuff. I've actually put texture, mud effect on it, um, which we'll have a look at in a minute. But what I thought I'd do is point out a couple of things with the instructions for this kit. <clears throat> so if you look at this, you see there, parts 52 and 53, they don't exist. They're not on the sprue. I checked the sprues. There's only two sprues. I checked them both thoroughly. They're not there. They hadn't broken off. There was actually no number 52 or 53 molded on to the sprue. So yeah, can't put them on obviously and the other thing was the fit issue with parts 26 and 27 the rest of the track fit pretty well there's a little bit of gappage there but nothing that you won't notice because you know it's underneath at the back of the tank so tank destroyer it's not a tank it's a tank destroyer there is a difference um but these two these are just not long enough the curve doesn't go around far enough to connect the two connection points there and there um, at all, basically. So you're gonna have a gap. So um, I filled it with um, liquid green stuff, which didn't help. <clears throat> I'm normally quite good with liquid green stuff, but this stuff, no, it just, no. So that's why I decided to mud this bad boy up. Um, we'll have a look when we get around to the front. So yeah, so if you get this kit, and um, I understand it's a bit of a thing with <clears throat> this type of track, um, the Stug kit has a bit of a gapping issue. Panzer three, horrific. The tracks of the Panzer three are horrible. If you're going to get a Panzer three, get a Rubicon one, because that's amazing. But yeah, anyway, so yeah, just bear in mind if you're buying an M10. So anyway, let's have a look at the model itself. So as you can see, it's all done with a little spatter effect, etc. etc. Um, I also recommend getting yourself some um, decal thinner, either Microsoft. Like I use Revell, that's only because it's in my local um, hobby shop. But Microsoft and Microsoft are perfect for it. Um, specifically for this big decal at the front, which actually didn't come with this kit, uh, it was on a different um a different decal sheet from a different kit still wall of games though um but this one the second it slid off the paper the one that came with this kit it just folded in on itself and it was totally unfixable so luckily i have a good supply of decals so yeah so as you can see putting the thinner on actually thins the film the decals printed on and it conforms to the rivets there so all we do is put on three or four coats conforms to the rivets seal it with whatever you seal it i use um lamia medium but um you can use spray and varnish airbrush varnish and make sure it's matte and then i put <coughs> sorry excuse me i put some um none oil across it thinned so you've got the de um, definition of the rivets anyway <clears throat> oh, sorry as you can see at the back there's the little fit issue there and there but once the mud is on you can't really notice and just to show this is the brush i used don't throw away old brushes when they get this bad this one's been used for dry brushing and in small bits and bobs. Don't throw these brushes away because they are perfect for dabbing on your texture paint. Which I used Sterling Mud for this one, again, because it was in my local hobby shop. Um, there are other ones on the market, obviously, such as Mig and AK and uh, Vallejo. Anyway, <clears throat> so it's just a case of just plopping it on and putting it where the mud would normally collect 
But as you can see around the front, even though there has been filled and I have mudded it up, you really can't, you can still see that horrible fit issue there. It's not so bad on this one, but this one, hmm. but yeah. So all in all, I am quite pleased with this. Um, a bit of shine in places, I might need to go over and hit it again with some varnish. But yeah, I am not disappointed with this. And the crew, um, massive mould lines across all the crew. I found that a lot with Warlord Games. They, for some reason, they have horrible mould lines. But it's not too bad just to scrape it off. In fact, if you use um, Tamiya Extra Thin her plastic glue it actually dissolves the mold lines and still keeps quite a lot of detail. Um, obviously, they're quite these crew figures are quite smaller than um, uh, your standard 28mm. So, anyway, there you go. This is all done. I'm quite happy with it. I'm just going to join the Americans and uh, they'll hopefully go on a tabletop battling against some Germans very soon so as usual guys do check all the links in the description for everything i can never remember um and all the social media stuff and also um like and subscribe and share help the channel out um which is massive and as always thank you for watching stay safe take care and i'll catch you guys next time